Welcome to Learn with Priyanka. This is a case study of Litware Inc. If you've already reviewed case study 2, please note that this one presents different questions. You may skip the case study description and proceed directly to the questions if you prefer. Now, let's dive in. Litware Inc. is a manufacturing company that has offices throughout North America. The analytics team at Litware contains data engineers, analytics engineers, data analysts, and data scientists. In their existing environment, Litware has been using a Microsoft Power BI tenant for three years. Litware has not enabled any fabric capacities and features. In the available data, Litware has data that must be analyzed as shown in the following table, and the product data contains a single table and the following columns. The customer satisfaction data contains the survey, question, and response tables. For each survey submitted, the following occurs. One row is added to the survey table. One row is added to the response table for each question in the survey. The question table contains the text of each survey question. The third question in each survey response is an overall satisfaction score. Customers can submit a survey after each purchase. User problems. The analytics team has large volumes of data, some of which is semi-structured. The team wants to use Fabric to create a new data store. Product data is often classified into three pricing groups, high, medium, and low. This logic is implemented in several databases and semantic models, but the logic does not always match across implementations. Under requirements, we have planned changes, where Litware plans to enable Fabric features in the existing tenant. The analytics team will create a new data store as a proof of concept, POC. The remaining Litware users will only get access to the Fabric features once the POC is complete. The POC will be completed by using a Fabric trial capacity. The following three workspaces will be created. 1. Analytics. POC will contain the data store, semantic models, reports pipelines, data flow, and notebooks used to populate the data store. 2. Data Engineering POC will contain all the pipelines, data flows, and notebooks used to populate one lake. 3. Data Science POC will contain all the notebooks and reports created by the data scientists. The following will be created in the Analytics POC workspace. A data store, type to be decided. A custom semantic model. A default semantic model. Requirement for the interactive reports are the data engineers will create data pipelines to load data to one lake, either hourly or daily depending on the data source. The analytics engineers will create processes to ingest, transform, and load the data to the data store in the analytics POC workspace daily. Whenever possible, the data engineers will use low-code tools for data ingestion. The choice of which data cleansing and transformation tools to use will be at the data engineer's discretion. All the semantic models and reports in the analytics POC workspace will use the data store as the sole data source. Technical requirements. The data store must support the following. Read access by using TSQL or Python. Semi-structured and unstructured data. Row-level security. RLS for users executing TSQL queries, files loaded by the data engineers to, one lake will be stored in the Parquet format and will meet Delta Lake specifications. Data will be loaded without transformation in one area of the Analytics POC data store. The data will then be cleansed, merged, and transformed into a dimensional model. The data load process must ensure that the raw and cleansed data is updated completely before populating the dimensional model. The dimensional model must contain a date dimension. There is no existing data source for the date dimension. The Litware fiscal year matches the calendar year. The date dimension must always contain dates from 2010 through the end of the current year. The product pricing group logic must be maintained by the analytics engineers in a single location. The pricing group data must be made available in the data store for TSOL, queries, and in the default semantic model. The following logic must be used. 
List prices that are less than or equal to 50 are in the low pricing group. List prices that are greater than 50 and less than or equal to 1,000 are in the medium pricing group. List prices that are greater than 1,000 are in the high pricing group. Security requirements. Only fabric administrators and the analytics team must be able to see the fabric items created as part of the POC. Litware identifies the following security requirements for the fabric items in the analytics POC workspace. Fabric administrators will be the workspace administrators. The data engineers must be able to read from and write to the data store. No access must be granted to datasets or reports. The analytics engineers must be able to read from, write to, and create schemas in the data store. They also must be able to create and share semantic models with the data analysts and view and modify all reports in the workspace. The data scientists must be able to read from the data store, but not write to it. They will access the data by using a Spark notebook. The data analysts must have read access to only the dimensional model objects in the data store. They also must have access to create Power BI reports by using the semantic models created by the analytics engineers. The date dimension must be available to all users of the data store. The principle of least privilege must be followed. Both the default and custom semantic models must include only tables or views from the dimensional model in the data store. Litware already has the following Microsoft Entra security groups. Fabric admins, fabric administrators, analytics team, all the members of the analytics team, data analysts, the data analysts on the analytics team, data scientists, the data scientists on the analytics team, data engineers, the data engineers on the analytics team, analytics engineers, the analytics engineers on the analytics team. Report requirements. The data analysts must create a customer satisfaction report that meets the following requirements. Enables a user to select a product to filter customer survey responses to only those who have purchased that product. Displays the average overall satisfaction score of all the surveys submitted during the last 12 months up to a selected DAT. Shows data as soon as the data is updated in the data store. Ensures that the report and the semantic model only contain data from the current and previous year. Ensures that the report respects any table-level security specified in the source data store. Minimizes the execution time of report queries. Question 60. You need to recommend a solution to prepare the tenant for the POC. Which two actions should you recommend performing from the Fabric Admin Portal? Each correct answer presents part of the solution. A. Enable the users can try Microsoft Fabric Paid Features option for the entire organization. B. Enable the users can try Microsoft Fabric Paid Features option for specific security groups. C. Enable the Allow Azure Active Directory guest users to access Microsoft Fabric option for specific security groups. D. Enable the users can create Fabric Items option and exclude specific security groups. E. Enable the users can create fabric items option for specific security groups. Pause the video, think about the answer, and let's discuss. The correct options are B and E. Let me explain why. Option A. Enabling paid features for the entire organization risks unnecessary exposure and costs since not everyone needs these features for the POC. This is why it's not suitable. Option B is correct because it restricts the trial of paid features to specific groups involved in the POC, aligning with the principle of least privilege. This focused approach limits potential risks and concentrates resources where they are most needed. Option C is incorrect because allowing Azure Active Directory guest users access is not relevant to the POC's internal team requirements and introduces unnecessary security risks. Option D excluding specific security groups from creating fabric items, could hinder the progress of team members who need these capabilities for the POC, making this approach inefficient. Option E is also correct. It enables specific security groups 
to create necessary fabric items, ensuring that only authorized personnel are involved, which enhances security and efficiency. That's why B and E are the best choices, focusing on security and efficiency. Question 61. You need to design a semantic model for the customer satisfaction report. Which data source authentication method and mode should you use? To answer, select the appropriate options in the answer area. The correct answers for the setup involve SSO authentication and direct query mode. Let's explore why these choices are optimal for the scenario. Authentication method, single sign-on. SSO is the preferred authentication method because it allows users to authenticate using their existing organizational credentials. This not only simplifies access across multiple systems, but also bolsters security by reducing the number of separate credentials users need to manage. Basic authentication, which relies on usernames and passwords, doesn't align with the robust security requirements of enterprise-level applications within Fabric. Service principle authentication is generally used for non-interactive applications or automated tools, which does not fit the interactive needs of analytics team members who will be working directly with the reports and semantic models. Thus, it is an incorrect choice. Mode. Direct query is chosen because it ensures that the data displayed in reports is as current as possible by querying the data source in real time whenever the report is accessed. While Direct Lake is a viable option due to its efficiency and support for row-level security, it does not guarantee immediate data updates as it may rely on cached data. This can be a limitation when the requirement specifies that the data needs to reflect updates immediately. By selecting SSO authentication and direct query mode, we ensure both secure and efficient access to the most current data, aligning with the project's security and performance requirements. For a deeper understanding, I recommend checking out the provided links in the video description for detailed guidance on setting up these features in Fabric. Question 62. You need to implement the date dimension in the data store. The solution must meet the technical requirements. What are two ways to achieve the goal? Each correct answer presents a complete solution. Note, each correct selection is worth one point. A. Populate the date dimension table by using a data flow. B. Populate the date dimension table by using a copy activity in a pipeline. C. Populate the date dimension view by using TCQL. D. Populate the date dimension table by using a stored procedure activity in a pipeline. Pause the video and consider the options before checking the answer. The correct answers are option A and option D. Option A. Data flows are excellent tools in Fabric for managing data transformations and manipulations before storage. They are particularly adept at handling date calculations and transformations making them ideal for creating a date dimension from scratch. Thus, it is a correct answer choice. Option B. While the copy activity is efficient for moving data from one place to another, it isn't typically used for generating new data from scratch, since there's no existing data source for a date dimension. This is an incorrect option. Option C. This option is incorrect because it involves a view which does not store data persistently. Views only display data based on existing tables and cannot serve as standalone data storage, especially not for a date dimension that requires physical storage for efficient querying and reporting. Thus, this is also an incorrect choice. Option D, stored procedures provide a robust method for encapsulating business logic for data manipulation directly within the SQL environment so it is our correct answer choice. Question 63. You need to ensure the data loading activities in the Analytics POC workspace are executed in the appropriate sequence. The solution must meet the technical requirements. What should you do? A. Create a data flow that has multiple steps and schedule the data flow. B. Create and schedule a Spark notebook. C. Create and schedule a Spark job definition. D. Create a pipeline that has dependencies between activities and schedule the pipeline.
Pause the video and consider the options before checking the answer. The correct choice here is option D, which involves using a pipeline with dependencies between activities. This approach is ideal because it ensures that all data loading activities are executed one after the other in sequence. Other options fall short for the following reasons. Option A suggests creating a data flow with multiple steps. While data flows are great for managing sequential data processing within their scope, they lack the comprehensive orchestration capabilities required for handling dependencies that span across multiple workflows or different types of operations. Option B involves scheduling a Spark Notebook. Spark Notebooks are better suited for exploratory data analysis and interactive data manipulation rather than for structured and repeatable data processing tasks required in production environments. Option C recommends scheduling a Spark job definition. Although this is effective for specific tasks, Spark jobs do not inherently offer a mechanism to manage complex dependencies between various tasks as effectively as a pipeline. Make 